Hello, happy Fosdom. Ah, my name is uh, Ilya Barishnikov, and uh, okay, my name is Ilya Barishnikov. A uh, few words about me: I'm a curator of AVI. Uh, I work at Align Technology, and I use Rust and WebAssembly at work. And if you go and check AVI, you can find a number of crates like with the description and so on. If you know a nice crate and, crate and it's not presented there, you can just uh, leave an issue or a kind of a suggestion. It would be very useful. Ah, so it would be a talk mostly about Wasm Engine. So what, what is it and why, why is it useful? Why do we need it? Actually, we can compile Rust to WebAssembly just using plain Rust-C or Cargo build. Mm. And here is an example of uh, building WebAssembly module just using plain Rust-C. But in, ca in this case, we have to do all the memory management on our own. Like here, we have at first to allocate the memory and send the pointer back to JavaScript. Then we have to set the memory from JavaScript because JavaScript and WebAssembly have uh, different memories. We have to copy data from JavaScript memory to WebAssembly memory. And then we call our computation where we construct the slice from raw parts and so on. So just we, we have to do it on our own using plain Rust-C. And it's a way to compile. We use CDI lib. Maybe. It's just a dynamical library, then using a target. And when calling from JavaScript, it looks like this. So at first we need to fetch and instantiate our WebAssembly module. Uh, then we have to access our exports, uh, then allocating memory, and now we have a pointer. Uh, then we have a view into this memory and as you can see we divide each pointer by four because uh, the view is offset in in 32 array and uh, uh, pointer is in bytes so we have to do all of this on our own then when we set the memory we basically copy the array from JavaScript memory to WebAssembly memory and then finally we can do our computation and the function names they are all in a snake case, <coughs> like in Rust. We are not used to this in JavaScript, so it looks a bit strange. Then we can do the same again in Wasm Bungeon. Uh, using a CDI lib again, just setting the dep dependency. And Wasm Bungeon does all of this for us. It just manages, it takes the memory management and uh, and so on, and generates JavaScript for us. And we can uh, annotate our functions uh, to have a correct, correct uh, camel case uh, JavaScript names. Everything looks cool. So it's just our Rust uh, uh, function without any unsafe or extern. But it's unsafe inside, it's just a wrapper. And then from JavaScript, we just import it. Uh, and uh, like any other JavaScript function, we pass the data again, like we used to do, and, and receive the results. Well, what, uh, that's just the point of uh, Wasm Bungeon. It, it just does a lot of work for us. Then, what about STD Web? There is really, a, there was a crate, just oh, created b before Wasm Bungeon, and a lot of libraries uh, written using STD Web, and after Wasm Bungeon was created and became more mainstream, people started to suggest, like, let's, let's rewrite this library from STD Web to Wasm Bungeon. But what if instead we could just build uh, them together and uh, just use both of them without rewriting anything? And it was a suggestion to do this, uh, it required to make some changes to Wasm Bungeon itself. Was one of the most noticeable change was uh, uh, just snippets. As uh, JavaScript is a modern assembly, we can have inline JavaScript in our Rust. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding, it's just... So, here, uh, 
we write JavaScript when we annotate it. It's like the corresponding uh, Rust function. We connect them like with JS name and so on. And uh, then we call uh, JavaScript from our Rust. That's it. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, the addition uh, to WasmBinegen which uh, helped to build a part of uh, STD web on top of WasmBinegen. And uh, luckily, the initial support of limited interoperability. So expect not everything <laughs> would work perfectly, but at least up to a certain point, it would work. It was re released, and uh, I think it's a big deal. Then, just another big point, like when we are writing for, writing Rust for web, just uh, it would be hard to write everything on our own. We, we have to use libraries, it would be really nice. So when you just grab a library and compile it and everything is fine, it's great. And this year there was a number of uh, libraries which uh, got uh, WebAssembly support or improved for example, Chrono, or uh, recently there was a release of Vinit, which got uh, WebAssembly support using both STD Web or WasmBinegen, you can choose which one. Uh, and uh, uh, Rand improved some, fixed some issues. Uh, and uh, a lot of other crates, I guess uh, JFXRS got uh, WebAssembly support this, uh, this year. Uh, uh, so, Mm, about uh, Rayon, uh, there was a nice addition uh, which allows you to handle uh, thread spawning on your own and you can even use, uh, with a bit of luck, you can use Rayon inside of the browser. <coughs> then, it was a really big feature when uh, async await landed in unstable Rust. And uh, when it comes to WebAssembly, uh, we have to connect uh, JavaScript promises with uh, uh, Rust features. And the create was binding features does this for us. So it provides uh, interoperability and it is a distant uh, executor. So it's a Rust executor built on top of uh, uh, JavaScript promises. And uh, let's check an example. At first, we need to define some JavaScript function which will return a promise. Like this. And then uh, we annotate our function, uh, the first line. It means uh, that this function will run when we just initialize the model. Uh, so it, it's just like a main. And uh, uh, then we can get the promise from JavaScript uh, when call, call, calling delayed answer. Uh, and JS future can convert promise to, uh, to future. So we can we convert the promise to future and then await on it, uh, resolving it to a result. And uh, after this, we can just log the, the message. And uh, from JavaScript side, it looks like this. We just called init, and what was uh, uh, written in uh, wasbindgen's start, uh, everything would run, and uh, all the async stuff. So you can just have async await in wasbindgen and use it on stable, and everything works, and so on. It's really cool. <clears throat> then uh, uh, there were a lot of talks about WebAssembly going outside of the browser, and we do have a number of uh, uh, runtimes uh, supporting WebAssembly. So it's not only browser, uh, but any arbitrary uh, just runtime which can run it. And CargoWasi is uh, a kind of similar to WasmPack. So WasmPack uh, creates a, a package for you, like NPM package or just a package which you can run with JavaScript. And uh, CargoWasi creates a 
package which you can run in standalone runtime. For example, in Wasm time or any other. So it also supports like uh, building and ru running, so you can cargo wise run or something like this. Uh, and uh, it's a really nice tool. Uh, <coughs> also, there was a, well, the things before, they are kind of more related to Rust or to interop, but this one is uh, an extension of uh, 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 specification. Multi-value is, uh, 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 if, I understand it, if I understand it correct, it is not supported by all browsers yet, uh, but, uh, well, if uh, runtime supports it, you can use it. But you still have to build uh, Rust, uh, and uh, uh, here is a great article by Nick Fitzgerald where he writes about implementing multi-value in Wasm Bindgen and a number of other tools. Uh, and it is a prerequisite for interface types because at the moment uh, uh, we, can have, we can return only numbers from WebAssembly or accept only numbers and if we want to pass uh, an array, for example, in the browser, we have to copy it to WebAssembly memory and pass the pointers. So interface types uh, would allow us uh, to uh, pass arrays or strings. It's just a definition of a memory layout. And multi-value is a prerequisite for it. And so the support of multi-value was added to what's margin and read more in this article. Uh, and... Um, to summarize, uh, uh, we got uh, better interoperability, uh, more libraries supporting uh, uh, compiling to WebAssembly. Uh, we can now use async await with Rust in a browser, and uh, we have uh, more runtimes and better support with uh, cargo uh, and new features like multi value. And really, a lot of uh, bug fixes were made to a, a number of different tools and crates and so on. Well, I guess that's all. And if you want more information, I posted uh, all the examples from the talk to GitHub. You can check them and run on your own, uh, like play with it. Uh, or also the links are here. So that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Questions. yeah. Questions? Okay. You mentioned that if Wasm Engine Futures comes with its own executor, can you clarify if you can mix like JavaScript based features with Rust features? Uh, okay, the question is uh, 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 that uh, uh, Wasm Engine Futures comes with its own executor, so can we mix the JavaScript promises with Rust features? Yes, we definitely can. Uh, uh, so the, key, the executor does uh, poll, poll, poll until the feature is ready. And here the poll is done uh, using a, a callback uh, to JavaScript. So we need just a, a way to, to not block. To, to leave the runtime to do an next tick. For example, if we uh, if we are not using a feature, if we have to wait, we need a mechanism to wait. So this me uh, this waiting thing is done using uh, using promises. Uh, in particularly, uh, we have uh, wait async uh, atomic. Uh, yeah, wait async it's a proposal. There is also a, a polyfill. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, just uh, in short, yes, we can uh, use both of them and interpret. Next. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the 